Okay, so in this lecture, I'm going to explain how you can uh, get PHP to work with MongoDB. So have a couple, we've had a couple of lectures explaining how MongoDB works, working with MongoDB using the command line. Um, and I did that because how you work on MongoDB with, on the command line is almost identical to how you work with MongoDB uh, using PHP, with the exception that you've got to use these sort of PHP, sort of data structure, sort of object type things, instead of using JSON. But apart from that, it's, it's extremely similar. So I'm going to give you a little bit of an introduction, and I'm going to explain some of the basic functionality that you're likely to need for your e-commerce website, such as adding documents, searching for documents, updating documents, and deleting documents. And all of the code um, that I'm going to demonstrate to you today in this lecture is available on the course website. So you're welcome to look at it, you know, to understand how it works in detail, and you're welcome to adapt it for your e-commerce websites. It's in no way a comprehensive e-commerce website, right? It's just useful bits of code that you might, might find handy and you're welcome to use. So before I start on the actual you know, meat and potatoes, if you like, of the um, relationship between PHP and MongoDB, I need to say a little bit about the drivers. So a driver is something that, um, so as you know, um, MongoDB is a server, it's a bit of software that's sitting and listening on a particular socket, waiting for you know, something to talk to it um, on, that, on that socket. Whereas PHP is a script that's executed you know, with an Apache or whatever. And so somehow the PHP needs a way of talking um, to the database, to the MongoDB database. And it doesn't come sort of built in with the ability to do this. What it needs is a driver, um, and the driver knows how to communicate with an appropriate socket um, to you know, send you know, requests or whatever to MongoDB and process whatever MongoDB set, sends back. And the driver is essentially uh, like a, a library, um, and so you need to install the library and kind of configure t p PHP so that it knows um, that the library exists and where to find it and so on and so forth. So the driver is adding functionality to PHP that enables it to use spe specific methods to communicate with MongoDB. It's so expanding the repertoire of methods that are available to PHP. Now, the tricky thing with PHP and MongoDB is that there's two versions of this driver. There's an old version of the driver and a new version of the driver, and there's advantages and disadvantages to both of these. So we've got the legacy driver, you know, did well for many years, I'm sure, um, and it works fine. It, it's a cracking little driver, um, but it's eventually going to go out of date. Now, in the real world, that's not such a big deal. I bet you that a large number of people who've used PHP and MongoDB in industry will conti are continuing to use the legacy driver because change is always expensive, takes time, and you really need a strong motivation to do it. So I bet the legacy drivers out there are working perfectly fine on many, many websites um, you know, in the world. So the legacy driver works perfectly well, but eventually, in the longer term, it won't, you know, there'll be a richer set of features released, and these richer set of features will be released with the newer driver. So the more recent driver, um, PHP MongoDB.dll, these are the window version of the drivers, um, you know, is uh, you know, the way to go if you're doing a greenfield project, starting off doing PHP MongoDB from scratch. But the limitation of this driver is that it's, um, it doesn't do much. It's just a sort of very bare bones kind of wrapper uh, for, the Mon for MongoDB functionality. To actually do stuff with this driver, um, people usually add the PHP library for MongoDB called PHP lib. So the legacy driver sort of did everything. You know, you had all the methods you needed to interact with MongoDB, just the same as you interact on the command line. The more recent driver, you've got to have the driver, and then you've also, to make it really sensible, you've got to have PHP lib as well. Now, the problem with PHP lib is that it's not just something you just dump into your web www folder. You actually have to install it using this package management system called Composer. Um, so you have to install Composer, and then you have to use Composer to add PHP lib to your PHP distribution, and it all gets rather complicated. It gets particularly complicated in this module because I've got to support the, the lab machines, um, you know, with, with all that sort of rebooting and wiping business. Um, and I've also got to support Windows, help people install this stuff on Windows laptops and help people install it on Mac laptops. And to be frank, I don't really like Composer that much. I find it a bit of a nightmare. Um, so all in all, um, using Composer and PHP lib seems more hassle than it's worth. I also think um, that it's more important to teach the basic principles 
Um, not the exact methods. So yeah, sure, maybe PHP lib has some slightly different methods from um, the legacy driver, but you know, in, in two months after you've finished your project, you're gonna forget what those methods were anyway. You're gonna have to look them up. So if you end up working in industry um, with the more recent driver and PHP lib, I'm sure it won't take you very long to find the, you know, to figure out the new uh, methods um, that are available here as opposed to the legacy driver. So what I've decided to do on this course, uh, which I think I explained here, yeah, so the, the PHP lib, it's gonna do roughly the same thing as the legacy driver, it's just gonna be longer term support and so on and so forth. And since the legacy driver is more straightforward to install and use, I'm gonna use the legacy driver on this course. So as I said, it's more about principles. I don't really think it matters that you have slightly different, you know, stuff in the legacy, in PHP lib, because I don't think you're gonna remember that. And most of you probably aren't gonna work on PHP and MongoDB anyway. I wanna teach you how MongoDB works and how to integrate that into an e-commerce website. That's the important thing, not the minor points about the, you know, legacy versus the more recent driver. So, I'm gonna base everything on the legacy driver. That's what this talk is all about. I'm gonna explain how you use the legacy driver um, to communicate between PHP and MongoDB. But you're more than welcome to use the newer driver and library. If you've got a laptop and you wanna use Composer to install PHP lib and you use the legacy driver, the new driver, sorry, absolutely fine. You'll lose no marks for that at all. Um, there'll be some minor differences, but I'm sure you can work them out. I'm gonna to stick to the legacy driver because uh, it's easy to release that legacy drive, to include that legacy driver uh, within the portable version of XAMPP, which is what I've done. So what I've done is I've set up the portable version of XAMPP and PHP and Apache to work with the legacy driver. So you, if you're just using the portable version, don't have to do anything at all, right? All you, you can ignore all this stuff because the, there's, the distribution I've given you includes this and PHP is configured to use this and it'll just work straight out of the box. If you're installing on your laptop, you're gonna to have to download and install the legacy driver. Um, and there'll be a bit of fiddling around because you need to find the right, there's probably a 32-bit and a 64-bit version. There'll be a bit, little bit of fiddling around to get it working on a laptop, but I've done the work in terms of the portable version and that should just work fine. So that's the picture. Um, you'll find it easier using the legacy one, but you're welcome to use the new one. So, um, now I'm gonna explain how you actually get it all working. So within your PHP scripts, um, you have some preliminary steps that you're gonna to have to do with every single um, script that uses MongoDB. And so you're gonna to have to do connect to the MongoDB. So you, so you get a sort of uh, reference to the a Mongo client, create a new Mongo client, um, and that's basically connects to the database. If we have to add the authentication steps, if we had authenticated database, and then you can um, select a database. I mean, you can, you don't necessarily have to select a collection because you can just use a database and then customers, for example, as in order to evoke a method on customers, but you can select a database and you can select a, a collection. So these are the sort of setting up stages um, that you need, you'll see at the beginning of all of the scripts that I'll give you um, because we need to obviously connect to the database in order to use the database. Now, at the bottom of all of your scripts, you should always disconnect from the database or you're gonna run out of connections. So MongoDB will support maybe 100 connections. Now, if you don't close the connection and run the same script 10 100 times, you're gonna have 100 open connections. And MongoDB can only support 100 open connections, so the 101st script that tries to connect the database will fail because it won't be able to connect to the database. So you must close the connection at the end of each script Otherwise, or you know, whenever you return from each script, otherwise um, your MongoDB, your PHP is gonna stop working with MongoDB. Right, so now that's the basics. Now I'm gonna talk through some, some examples um, of how you can use PHP with MongoDB. So adding a document. So as you probably remember um, from the command line stuff, if we want to insert a document uh, on the command line, we create a sort of JSON file with a set of key value pairs like name, David, address, you know, and the address and, the, and so on and so forth. To do the same thing with PHP, we have to use the PHP data structures instead of JSON. So this is the sort of disadvantage of using PHP with MongoDB because it doesn't have that nice mapping between uh, sort of objects in PHP and JSON. Um, you know, it's because it, PHP is not, you know, it's not JavaScript, right? But the good news is PHP is very, objects can be created in a very similar way to JSON objects and PHP has methods or functions rather for converting between to and from PHP objects and JSON objects. So it's, it's okay. 
So if we want to add a document, we need to create a PHP array that contains the data. As I said, not a JSON array, a PHP array. And a PHP array looks a bit like this. You know, if you've forgotten all your PHP, go back and watch the lecture on PHP, because you know, I know it was a while ago. So all of this stuff was covered um, in the PHP lecture. So you know, pause the video now and go back and watch the PHP lecture. And then when you come back, we'll continue kind of thing. So a PHP array looks like this. We've got you know, name of the array, and then you've got the square brackets. And then with PHP, you've got like the keys and quotation marks here, name, email, password. You've got this funny arrow business. So that's the key, and then this is the value here. This is like, you can have strings, numbers, and so on and so forth. Um, so this key is pointing to this value, this key is pointing to this value. Separate the key value pairs with the commas, and you know, obviously a semicolon at the end of the whole thing. So we're creating this PHP data structure. And then all we do is we do exactly what we did in the command line. We've, we've selected our collection here. And so we just do collection.insert, uh, and then the PHP data structure we want to insert into the database. So very easy. It's almost identical to the, MongoDB, to the command line on the MongoDB. The insert method uh, returns an object that we can then use to check that it all went OK. Because whenever you do stuff on a database, especially with web stuff, you, know, you need to make sure that it worked. right? You, you know, if it kind of falls over and dies, or you know, had some error in the insert method, um, you need to check that. Because otherwise, you know, you're going to get errors further down the line. So this insert method returns returns an object, this return value here, and then we can access properties of this um, operation of the result of this operation, such as OK. It's got a key called OK, and if OK is set to one, then the operation was successful, and then so we can echo that result back to the user. So we're getting this back, and then we can echo it. Um, otherwise, if we don't, if OK is not equal to one, if it's equal to zero, for example, then there would be some kind of error, and you need to tell the user about that um, so that they can do something about it. So to illustrate all this, I thought I'd have a simple registration example. So here we have a standard form. The form is when you sum, when you click on submit here, it's going to send the data in the form to this script here, add customer PHP, and the form contains. You know, it's standard input fields, a name with the called name, email address, and the password. So we've got name, email address, and password. Those are the keys, and the values will be whatever the user types in here when they click and then click, when they click submit. So it's add customer PHP. It's this here. So at the top of this, as I explained, you've got this sort of setting up stuff where we connect to the database and uh, you know select the database. Connect to the MongoDB, select a database, and select a collection. You can do this in different ways, I explained. And at the bottom, we're kind of closing the connection here. And the main kind of chunk of this um, is we're extracting uh, the name, the email, and the password um, from uh, what's been sent to the script, right? Because it's, we submitted the form using POST in this case. So we're going to extract the name, and the email, and password from, from the data sent to the script. And we're going to use filter input because in case something nasty has been sent, and I'm going to cover that in a later lecture on security, privacy, legal issues. So we've got the name, email, and password that's been submitted. We put those into a data array um, where the keys are name, email, and password. These are the fields we want in the document. Um, so we create our PHP data structure, and then we do call create PHP data structure, and then we insert that data structure into our collection. Check the return value is OK, and echo the result back to the user. So dead easy. Um, and now I'll do a demo. Right, so here's my uh, add customer HTML, right? So this is the form. So let's do David Kemis, uh, D at g.com, one, two, whatever. I'm going to so click Submit. It says OK. So now if we go to the command line, so now Initially, I had no customers, but if I do DB customers find, then we've got David Gamers. Now, I'm going to add a few more customers because um, we're going to need them later for later examples. So we'll add, add several Aaron Smith, uh, AS.com, one, two, and, you know, Aaron Jones, and Jones, A. J.com and I know Anne Williams A at W.com to I don't know, maybe David Owen or something. 
dro.com, uh, one, two, it doesn't really matter what the passwords are. Okay, so we've added a few bits of data to the database. So if you look here, we do customers are fine pretty. And then we've got David Owen, Anne Williams, Anne Jones, Anne Smith, and David Gammers. So these are all the, all the data that's just been added, inserted in exactly, using the script in exactly the way I just described. Right, so that's all using a standard form method, which you probably find the easiest way of uh, working with PHP and MongoDB. You just click on submit in the form, the data gets sent to PHP, you extract the data from the post, and that's done. But we might want to use Ajax, right? If we want a more elegant, clean solution, we might want to use Ajax to send J JSON data to the server, and then the server could add this data to the database. To make this work, we, we send the string, we convert that JSON string to a PHP array using one of the built-in PHP functions, and then we add the PHP array to the database in the same way as before. So in this case, I'm not actually going to bother with the sort of front end here, but suppose we've got some, suppose we've, this script has received uh, test customer data in which we have like a, this is the JSON string here, right, with a name, email, and password. This could be sent using Ajax. Then what we do is we use the, the, the PHP method uh, JSON decode, um, JSON decode will convert a JSON string into a PHP array. So that's we'll convert that into this customer data array here. And then we do exactly the same thing. Now we've got the PHP data structure. We can then insert that into MongoDB in exactly the same way we inserted, you know, the PHP data structure before. And then we do the same kinds of checks. So it's just as easy to use JSON, except in this, obviously, we have to send the string in JSON format. Right, so that's uh, adding customers to the database. Next thing I'm going to cover is searching for uh, documents from the database. So if we want to do searching, as you probably remember, to do a search, we have to use the find method uh, with MongoDB. And with the find method on the command line, uses a JSON array. And with uh, PHP, we just have the same thing. We use the find method, except in this case, we're using a PHP array instead of a JSON object, right? We draw a JSON description of the search criteria. So we need to convert the search criteria into PHP array, and then we use the find method to search the database, which return, this returns a cursor. A cursor is a, a pointer to a data structure, and this data, it could be a pointer to one thing, one object from the database, or it could be a pointer to multiple um, objects that we've or multiple documents, multiple data structures that have come from the database. Uh, so we might have to work through um, several, several things when, we, when we're processing the result. Or we might just get a single result and just process that single result. So here's a little example. So here we have a find customer uh, demo. So here we have a form. Um, this is submitting the form to the find customer PHP script. In this case, we're doing using get method because we just want to get the customer's information. We're not sending any data to the server that's going to modify the server. You know, remember all that RESTful stuff I think I mentioned in an earlier lecture. So we type in the customer's name, click submit, and it will uh, look for the customer that matches that name. That's the idea of this. And here's the script, so we're pulling out the name from the, from the get um, data structure in, in PHP. Now, just as we had a JSON uh, find criteria, search criteria um, when we were doing it on the command line, here we have a PHP data structure that represents uh, our search criteria. In this case, we're looking for a, a document that contains documents that contain a uh, name, the name key set to the value of name that we set, sent to the script. And all we do is run exactly the same search thing that we do on the command line, where we do find, passing in the data structure, specifying the search criteria. This will give us um, a cursor as a result. And then we can wrap these results in HTML. And you're going to see that a lot. And you can probably use that a lot in your e-commerce websites. We've got, a date, we've got some data from the database. And then we want to wrap it in HTML so we can display it to the user. So here we're echoing results. And then here's the for each loop, right? So Cursor is this cursor here, and remember the for each loop will work through a data structure, and for each iteration of the loop, it'll copy the next piece of data into the, what we specify here, the variable we specify here. So suppose we've got three customers, the first time we run this for each loop, it'll copy the first customer into customer, and now we can access the email and name of that customer and output them to the user. The second iteration of the for each loop, it'll copy the second customer into customer, and then we can output their name and email address again. And then the third iteration of the loop, it'll copy the third customer into customer, into cust, and then we can access that there. So it enables us to work through, uh, work through the data structure um, and wrap it in HTML so we can display it to the user. 
So yeah, that's the name, the search criteria. We're um, applying find to pull this, the, find, the search criteria. We're using our find criteria uh, to search for customers that match that criteria. And then we're working through the cursor to output the results here. OK, so let's have a look. So here's customer name. So firstly, I'll try David, right? Just to show you the difference between, because um, we're looking for an exact match. So David produces nothing, right? But if I produce, uh, I think I had David, did I have David Gomez? Uh, David Owen, right? I remember doing that. So if I search for David Owen, um, then it'll output David Owen, because there's a single David Owen in the database. And if we look here, the actual script, we can actually access the script directly because we can pass it, because it's a get. Um, we're using get to access the script. So we can pass in name equals uh, David uh, Owen. And there we go, it's doing the URL encoding for me. There's David Owen. And what was it, Anne Williams, was it? Uh, Anne Williams, right? So we can actually use the uh, query string here at the end um, to pass the data in directly rather than using the um, HTML on the form. If we wanted to test the script, this would be a nice, easy way to test it without having to mess around with a web interface. So again, if we're using Ajax and we're, we might want to send a, a search, a find sort of request to the, to, the web, to the server and get the results back in JSON format, and then we could use JavaScript to put the results into the, into the page. Um, yeah, this is the simple string. So if we want to send JSON formatted uh, string back to the, back to the client, um, we can use some simple string manipulation to build that JSON string um, from the PHP array of results. So this is exactly the same thing. We're getting, um, doing a search for the customers, and, we're, and then we're, but in this case, we're trying to, we're using um, a bit of string manipulation to build a JSON string that we're returning. So, uh, ba -ba 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 -ba. so here we're echoing the, the start of an array because it's uh, in JSON arrays with the square brackets. Then we've got the for each loop. And for each of these, as, as I explained last time, at each time we work through the for each, each iteration of the for each loop, we're copying the next customer into this customer variable. And all I'm doing here is echoing a JSON, I'm using the PHP function JSON encode to convert this PHP data structure into a JSON formatted data structure. So I'm outputting the JSON formatted, JSON version of the customer data structure. And what I'm doing here is I'm echoing a comma after each of the customers, unless it's the last customer, because you don't want an array, a comma at the end of an array in JSON, after the last item in an array in JSON, because that introduces an error. There's supposed to be no comma after the last element. So that's what this counter stuff's doing. It's just making sure there's a comma after all of the customers except the last one. And then in the end, we echo this final closing square brackets. So let's just show you the, that version. Um, there's my customer, find customer JSON. So currently, it's not finding any customers. Uh, no, wait a minute. Do I need, there's no customers, right? Now if I do, um, Na name equals David Owen, for example. So there we go, right? So it's worked through the customer data structure. In fact, it's only found one matching record, which is fine. And it's encoded the, the, data the PHP data structure in JSON format. So we've got like the ID, the name, the email address, and the password. So if it, uh, uh, JavaScript running in the client could access this script, find a customer, get it back in JSON format, and then insert um, the data by simply converting it into a JavaScript object and then wrapping an HTML and putting it inside the page. So in a previous lecture, I explained how we can actually create an index. So this kind of search is OK if you want to find an exact uh, match for the, for the name. Um, but it's not great if you want to do some kind of free text matching where you've got like long descriptions and you want to see if the word that you're searching for exists somewhere in that long string of words. So, you know, we're looking, so if we've got an index search, we can search for documents that match words in a long piece of text because it breaks the text up into, you know, the individual chunks of text and looks for, and does pair, sort of matching between your word and each of those chunks of the text. Again, this kind of search is easy to implement in PHP. It works in exactly the same way um, as it does on the command line. Um, so to, as I explained uh, in that previous lecture, if we wanted to 
if we want to do an index search, we have first have to create an index. So we do in this cat example, we have db cat create index, and we're saying keywords. So here we've got keywords is one of the uh, fields in the document, like we've got keywords, happy, playful, prefers chicken, so on, keywords, introverted, hairy, stares at fish and pond. So we've got this keywords field, and then we're saying we want to, that's what we want to index, these keywords here, and we want to create a text index. So we do db cats, create index, keywords, text. And then we will, when we want to do the search, we specify we want to do a text search, and then the search criteria are um, looking for the, key, for the fish keyword in this case. So if we do search fish, it will, fish it will return all of the documents that have fish in the keywords. And if we search for, you know, uh, chicken or something, it'll return all of the cats that have chicken in their keywords. <coughs> now we can do exactly the same thing in PHP, as long as the database is set up correctly. So I'll give you a little example. So here we have a simple search form uh, that does uh, this kind of index search instead of the exact matching search. So here I've called it, you know, so here we have a form, type in the name, exactly the same as the previous one, except in this case it's sending it to find customer index search.php, again with the get method. And, you know, as you'd expect, it looks exactly the same as the command line. So we have the, we're getting the search string here, um, which, got, you know, which is sent as name. And we do, in this case, we're building a find criteria that looks the same as the JSON find criteria, except it's in the PHP format. So we have the dollar text, that's saying we want to do a text search, and the search criteria here is, so this is a subarray, um, is pointing to the search string that was sent here. So it looks just like the JSON, and we just do find with that find criteria, and with a bit of luck, that'll return our, you know, a cursor pointing to multiple records. We work through those multiple records and wrap them up with a bit of HTML to show them to the user, same as, same as we did in the previous example. And we get, so we get results like this, because in this case, we've got, um, in the, when I did this example, we've got three, I, I indexed, I'm indexing the name here. So we've got Ann Jones, Ann Smidgley, and Ann Douglas. So the previous example, it would only do an exact match for Ann Jones. But in this example, it's breaking up the name into its constituent words and doing a match between Ann and each of those words. And I think I searched for Ann here, so it's returning the three records that have Ann as the first name. So I'll give you a demo again. Okay, so customer name David, for example, with a bit of luck, give me two Davids, right? And if I do customer name Owen, uh, Owen should give me one record, right? Because there's one Owen, David Owen, right? And if I search for Anne, uh, there's one Anne, right? So there's the three Annes. So yeah, I should have mentioned. Um, so this is this is already indexed, but if I wanted, to, if I do customers. Uh, if I should have created the, this is already index because I was testing it, but um, if I wanted to create the index, it'd be create index. Um, now I always remember the, yep, that's it. So it'd be name. Um, I think that's right. Uh, it says index already exists, but that's fine because that's, you know, I'm just showing you how you do it, right? So hopefully that still works. Yeah, there we go. And the script's the same, right? I can just test it with doing name with David, or name equals, you know, Owen. Now that won't give anything. Williams, right? Should return one of the Anne's. So you can see it's looking for, it's searching within the name because it's, I've indexed it instead of just searching for an exact match. So we can find our documents. Um, what we might also want to do is to update those documents. So the customer changes their details, um, or we've got an order maybe, or you know, there's lots of applications for updating documents in e-commerce uh, websites, particularly with the CMS actually. So the example, example I'm gonna give you here is particularly handy if you wanna, there's a marks for editing products and stuff like that, and, and you're gonna need to be able to update documents to make that work. So update works the same as the console. We have our search criteria, and with the update method, we then specify which fields we want to change in the documents that match the search criteria. Um, and so the search criteria in the specification new data are PHP arrays, as you expect. So we got, first we've got the find criteria, which is locating the documents that we want to update. Then we've got the update criteria. This is how we want to change the documents that match the search criteria. And all we do is call update 
um, with the find criteria and the update criteria. And I think that this will update just one of the, the first document that it finds that matches these criteria. So look for it, because it's update, we need to set uh, multi to true, I think, to update all of the documents um, that match the criteria. And then we run a check um, that, you know, it's all worked okay. So pretty simple, straightforward, I think. Now, this update just changes uh, the value of a single key associated with a single key. Saving documents will just completely overwrite the document in the database um, and use the ID to specify which document we want to completely overwrite. Again, we use the save method. New data is a PHP array. The crucial thing here is we need to use a Mongo ID class to hold the ID. So you can't, with IDs, you can't just treat them as simple data structures. You have to use this kind of, um, do, use the Mongo ID class, which I'll show you. Otherwise, it just won't work. So little, here's a little save example. So we're just, again, the usual, typing some text, clicking submit. Oh yeah, so this is, uh, this is a little bit complicated, this example, actually. So let's just, let's just go through this slowly. So how this works, to give you the big picture, is we search for some documents. We search for documents first using what I just explained, standard index search. So I'll go through it quickly, then I'll go back and come to it later. So we search for documents um, and, what, and, and send the search query to this, to this uh, PHP script here, customer update forms. What customer update forms does is it generates, instead of returning just a list of results, it generates a form for each of the results that, it, that match the search criteria. So here, and the forms contain the data from the database. So here we have a form for Anne Jones's data, Anne for Anne Smidgley's data, and a form for Anne Douglas's data. We search for Anne in this case. Now when you, then you can submit these, then you can make a change to one of these forms and submit it, and the ID is hidden in this form so that then the data, so then the script can extract the ID from the form and use that to update the record of Anne Smidgley in this case. So that's the quick picture. And when you submit, the, submit that form, you get to the custom, to, to this bit, and then that saves the custom, that overwrites the data using save. So I'll go through this now slowly. So the first stage is the search, and the search is just sending the search criteria to customer update forms. The, the key difference here is that customer update forms is searching for the documents in a standard way using the standard search criteria, but it's outputting the results in a different way. It's outputting each of the customers as a form. So that's the standard searching, searching for the match. I might have, yeah, so it's outputting things as a form. So I'll just show you, so I'll show you that. I think I can show you a clearer version of that form. If I look in the notepad, yeah, here we go. So, so the form, each of these forms, um, when you submit the form, it sends it to this script called savecustomer.php with a post. And it's got these input fields, right? Um, and each of these input fields contains the data, um, the customer's data, right? So we've got one that's got the name, which contains the customer name here. One that contains the customer's email. It's here, so it's a bit squashed. I'm trying to make it big enough to see. And the really tricky thing here, or the potentially novel thing here, is we've got input type equals hidden. So an input field that's hidden is part of the form, it's submitted with the form, but the user can't see it. And what's been put in this hidden input field is the ID of the customer. Okay, here's the customer ID going into the input field. So when the user clicks submit, the script that receives this data also has the ID field, um, and it can use that ID then to overwrite the customer's data. Okay, so that's generate. So we're generating a separate form for each of the customers, um, and these can be submitted. In, they're sort of submitted independently. So as I said, yeah, this is the ID field, um, which is hidden inside the forms. So when we submit the forms, uh, the script save customer PHP um, can pr extract that ID and overwrite the document. So the user uses one of these forms to edit the customer's data and click submit. Can only submit one of them at a time. Sends the data to save customer PHP, and save customer PHP saves the new data. Um, using the customer's MongoDB ID. Okay, so that's the, that's the save, that's the f where the forms are being sent. And here's the save customer PHP. So here we have, uh, obviously we're pulling out the name, email and password from the input fields that the customer's potentially changed. But we also have this ID field, which comes out of, which is hidden in the form, so you can't actually see it when you look at the form. So you can't see the, you can, there's no ID field there, right? Because it's hidden, um, and that's what it means to be, have a hidden form field. 
So we create the customer data, and we're here we're including the ID. So the key for the ID has to be underscore ID in the standard way Mongo IDs are done. But the value, I can't just put the ID field here. I have to do a new Mongo ID and use the ID as the argument um, for the constructor uh, for the Mongo ID. So must, you can't just point it to ID. You must use Mon new Mongo ID if you're manipulating IDs, Mongo IDs, or it just won't work. So here's our data structure, and then we can do the standard thing, we just call save, and as long as the data structure is correct, as long as we use MongoID, um, we'll be able to overwrite the customer's data in the database. So I'll give you a little demo. Um, uh, ba -ba -ba -ba. All right, so here we go. So let's search for uh, David, let's say. Right, so we've got David Owen, David Gammers. Uh, let's change the email address. Uh, David Owen can be David uh, example.com and we'll change the password to one two one two three four. So at the moment, uh, David Owen is DO with a password one two. Submit that. And it says OK, so presuming it's worked, we can just check that. And then, so now we've got David Owen, and now it's instead of, now it's David at example.com 1234. So all the other records have changed. We've just overwritten the record for David Owen. So I said this is particularly handy um, for your content management system because then you can edit the product's details. You can just output all the products as these forms, and then you can edit the details of the products and then resubmit them. So if you're changing the stock count in your content management system, that's a good way to do it. So the next thing I want to cover is deleting a document. You often want to do that. Your customer you know, wants all their records deleted from their database or whatever, or you're getting rid of a product you no longer sell. Um, and again, as with all these examples, we're just using a search criteria to pick out the document that we want to delete. Um, and for example, this search criteria could also be a document ID, but we could also delete according to a different search criteria. It doesn't really matter. So in this example, I'm going to delete using customer ID. So here we have an input field where we type a customer ID. Um, and this is being sent to the script delete customer PHP. We're going to post it. Um, and it works exactly the same way. We pull out the customer ID from the post field. We specify a search criteria that I call remove criteria. It's again, just a PHP array. Except again, we have to use new Mongo ID because we're dealing with Mongo IDs. Can't treat that as a string. Have to do new Mongo ID. And the underscore ID is pointing to that. So this is a correct search criteria for an ID. So now we call remove. It'll remove the first matching record um, according to, and there'll only be one anyway because it's an ID. So we call customers remove. And again, we can check that it all works. So again, final, give you a final demo of this. So let's find a customer we want to remove. Let's, let's remove Ann Williams, so let's mark, let's pull out the ID there, um, and press return to copy it, I think it is. Now let's go to our deletes. So if we paste in Ann Williams, that's her ID, click submit, with a bit of luck, okay, one document deleted. So now let's go back to this and see if Ann Williams is there. Yeah, you can see Ann Williams has been deleted successfully. So, it's been a lot of code. Um, I'm not expecting you to remember every you know, last keystroke, right? So I've put all this code in example code, PHP MongoDB, which is available on the course website. So, as usual, you're welcome to adapt and reuse bits of this code however you need to, to make your e-commerce websites work. There's nothing radically original about any of it. I'm just explaining the basic functionality of PHP working with MongoDB. Okay, and that's what, so this lecture has explained how you can use PHP with MongoDB, and the next lecture is going to go uh, talk about session management.